Hey guys, it's the Melblade 5. You know, despite Kirby Games' reputation for being very easy, which can be seen as a good or bad thing depending on your viewpoint, I think most of the fun for people who've played them comes from the usage of the copy abilities. With all the wide, weird, and wacky variety of power-ups that Kirby gains from sucking up enemies that go beyond the standard elemental power-ups you tend to see in a lot of other platformers. And the crazy movesets that each ability grants. There are currently just under 60 copy abilities present across the series, with even more to make their debut once Forgotten Land comes out, like Kirby canonically getting a gun! No, Johnny, don't do it! So I took it upon myself to whittle it down to just 10 to present my favorites of the bunch. There are definitely way more than just 10 abilities in the series that I really like, but it ended up being surprisingly easy to pick out the 10 I liked the most and organizing them on which ones I liked just a little bit more than others. Concept does play a small part in the criteria, but for once, it's the pure gameplay side that played the biggest factor in the selection and placements. Boiling down to how much fun I find them to use based on their move lists, damage output, speed, effectiveness against enemies and especially bosses, and I guess, spamminess as well. Since almost every copy ability I love has one move that I find particularly useful and strong, which I just choose to spam repeatedly and is something that will fittingly be a recurring thing across this video. However, one thing that has pretty much stayed the same for most other countdowns is that there is a bias towards the abilities that have appeared in the games I've played. So the older ones that haven't shown up as of late unfortunately got the shaft due to them being somewhat lost to time and availability, whilst I'd obviously have more fun with those I've used myself as opposed to watching someone else doing it. And I don't want to cheat too many times in these videos. Lastly, though I'd assume everyone would have figured this out already, I'm only including standard copy abilities. There's no single use, super, or final boss exclusive powers here because they're just naturally better or so limited in availability that it wouldn't be fair. I am sort of counting mixed abilities or Robobot armor modes, but only as additional points in favor of the original abilities that they are based on. Now I can contribute towards Kirby's unending appetite as he demonstrates my top 10 favorite copy abilities. <laughs> Doctor. So after attending the same medical school as Mario and getting his questionable PhD in medicine, Kirby is fully qualified to take up the lab coat and head mirror. But rather than using these newfound skills to throw colored pills down a ball to kill some viruses, Kirby uses them to beat the shit out of people. Most of this ability's attacks involve him throwing those same colored pills as projectiles that bounce along the ground at either a low, normal, or high height, with different throwing arcs and frequencies for each attack. The regular B button attack throws one pill that bounces a few times, holding down B throws out five pills covering both sides of him, and the jumping dash attack throws out three that do quite a bit of damage. While the standard pill throw does serviceable amounts of damage and can be used as insurance for any enemies that might be just off screen, their slow speed and random bouncing heights leave them feeling a bit unreliable to me. Though the other two pill moves I think are very good. Fortunately, everything else about Doctor also goes up from before. The one issue I have with the pills can often be ignored thanks to the clipboard bash, the dash attack for this ability, which is conveniently one of the stronger attacks in this set and makes Kirby invincible as he sends enemies in front of him flying while not having enough ending lag to the point that it can't be used in almost rapid success. But most of all is the very unique move, Science Lab. Crouching and holding B will have Kirby create one of four possible chemicals, each with their own very good effects. Spawning a pillar of fire, freezing the air above him, shooting out six electric sparks, and a healing potion. Making it one of the few abilities that can heal Kirby on its own. And with Research Vault, you can guard to then store this chemical for later use when it's needed, assuming you don't get hit further increasing its range of application in addition to how each of the elements can be used for any puzzles that need them which you may come across, and are very strong to boot. Even with the random factor, this instantly makes Doctor a much more viable option. Where outside of Europe you now have the means to injure others so that they will have to pay you to treat them. It's the perfect crime. <laughs> Spider. 
Those star allies didn't add that many new abilities, I certainly got a kick out of most of the ones that did appear. While Spider, at first glance, suffers from a similar downside to Doctor of having very slow attacks in addition to most of them being weak as well, the trade-off you get from that is pretty much worth it when it comes to the fun factor. The attacks are what you'd expect, creating webs, be that shooting them from your wrists with a somehow worse throwing distance than me chucking a ball, or creating structures out of them. But what's more important is that most of these moves trap enemies inside pods upon contact, and this is where the true strength of Spider lies. Once an enemy is trapped in a pod, they can then be thrown around the whole place like a pinball which damages any other enemies they are knocked into, setting up the possibility of making some crazy combos that I find so much fun to watch play out. You can simply kick the pod by running into it, or grab it to use it as a blunt weapon before throwing it away. And all these dude perfect pod tricks are significantly more powerful than the rest of Spider's moveset dealing three times the amount of damage of what most of the standard attacks do to any enemy struck by the pod, and instantly killing the one inside the pod itself. And with the right entrapment location and throwing angle, which is quite easy to achieve mind you, you can clear out an entire row or even screen of enemies in a chain reaction. It's even easier to achieve if you encase a larger enemy as pod size scales to them. But the more exciting option is to encase multiple enemies which can also be done at once with moves like Network, and then have all those pods flying around at the exact same time, creating complete chaos. And surprisingly, this ability has a few defensive maneuvers as well, like Network being used to stop approaching enemies in their tracks, but more specifically, guarding with this wraps Kirby up in a spiky pod that damages anything that comes into contact with him. Even though I rarely ever use guard in these games, I can certainly see a use for this technique. On the other hand though, Spider is a bit difficult to use against most bosses. Unless they summon enemies or objects that can be webbed like Wispy, you won't be able to use pods against them, and thus you're stuck using very weak attacks to slowly whittle down their health which I can imagine being very mundane. So I often tend to drop the ability by the time I make it to a boss. Being a friendly neighborhood Kirby is nice, but you sadly can't stay that way. I'm Spider no more. Jet. An ability that I have a little bit of strange history with, though I use the word history loosely because of the lack of games I've played with this ability in them. I first discovered it in Planet Robobot, thinking it was brand new because it matched the mechanical theme of the game, and only later learned it's been around way before that. And I didn't learn my lesson. So this entry is based purely on its Planet Robobot appearance, where despite really liking the concept, I didn't use it that much on my first playthrough outside of its Robobot armor mode that I found to lead to some very fun space shooter sections. It was only until later on that I gave Jet the time to shine on its own merits where I may have judged it too harshly at first. My initial concern with Jet was that I got the impression it had a very limited moveset, as I could only seem to do simple dashes forward or grabs for attacks. Turns out it has way more techniques than just that, with most of them being performed by commands following the store power charging move. So following this discovery, my only gripe with Jet then became that many of these moves, while being very good and fun to use, do feel samey, as they boil down to dashes in different directions. I would have liked some kind of missile attack like the armor mode, but I guess that would be going against the whole point of this ability, which is just RAM INTO EVERYTHING! Almost all the dashing moves grant Kirby invincibility while they're in effect, meaning you can usually be reckless when in possession of it and their damage tends to range from being fairly to really strong, so it's well worth it. Those factors combined together, alongside a fully charged store power, has given Jet somewhat of a reputation for being an effective boss killer. You can even store a full charge similar to Science Lab for later use, and the subsequent dash attacks have different additional effects to provide much greater utility than what I fought before. The simply named Jet Dash can be angled up or down for different trajectory, Jet Kick can be rebounded off of walls, Jet Cracker creates powerful explosions in front of Kirby for an actual projectile, and Ultra Jet Jump has Kirby fly straight up and explode for tons of damage in total. Plus, this even improves Kirby's natural abilities by replacing his float with a thruster that is much faster. 
allowing me to speed right through areas where I need to go fast, which was something that got pronounced even more by the dashes. Other than that, I like the hat! <laughs> UFO The ability I've often seen regarded as one of, if not the best copy ability in the whole series. So there probably was some expectation for it to appear. I was fully aware of the reputation of this ability before I'd even laid eyes on it. And once I got to use it myself, I began to develop similar feelings towards it. UFO is what you would get if you could be in Jet's armor mode the entire time. Everything becomes a space shooter, because it grants Kirby levitation while in this form, where you can now simply move up and down to travel through the air as opposed to pressing the jump button all the time. And you gain access to useful, mostly projectile attacks that only require you to press the A and B buttons. Even an amoeba can play well with this ability. For starters, you have the Chain Beam, a short, whip-like laser that hits enemies multiple times to rack up damage. Then when charging, it becomes the Smart Beam, which shoots a laser that bounces off of walls. Charging for longer makes it the Heat Beam, where it's stronger but doesn't bounce. Then charging even longer, it becomes the Piercing Heat Beam, to make it even stronger and passes through walls. And in Planet Robobot, they added an extra stage beyond that, which turns it into the Heat Cannon, that fires piercing and regular heat beams in front and behind him, with that first beam being the strongest attack on this list at 65 damage, according to the wiki. Every enemy will be vaporized by this attack. And Planet Robobot added even more than just that. It made the Star Guard from Mouse Attack a technique to perform rather than having to find a scroll for it, a dash attack that deals damage while being very fast and potentially able to dodge incoming attacks, and even a tractor beam to suck up inhalable enemies, which is most likely a reference to the saucer form's power in Epic Yarn. This ability is the definition of overpowered, turning the game into safe Phoenix easier mode. So why is it only at number 7? If we were to take these abilities at face value, then UFO would definitely be number one. But UFO's whole thing is that it's a super powerful ability with limited availability. In the rare instances that it comes up, it's either for a short level or a short section of one where you have to lose it afterwards. One of Planet Robot's other buffs to UFO is that it can essentially be kept forever, but it's your reward for getting 100%. Or from an amiibo, of which I own... None. It is for the best this way though, otherwise it would completely break the game. Beam. From the get-go, Beam was one of the copy abilities that resonated with me the most due to a combination of its concept by being able to shoot freaking laser beams at people, and its appearance cause I like the hat again. I don't know why it's a jester hat, but I like the color combination in Star Pattern. In some respects, Beam is like a much weaker version of UFO, but one that you can keep like almost any other standard copy ability. And I've always been of the belief that the less situational something is, the better. Yet Beam has plenty more of its own unique traits to stand out on its own and made me really like it even before drawing those comparisons. This primarily being its combo potential, as while its move pool is a lot more limited compared to the others on this list, many of them hit multiple times and have a decent-ish area of effect for those that don't require any prior setup to use. Like the Beam Whip. Basically a weaker chain beam that has some nice range and coverage both in front and almost entirely above Kirby for just the standard attack. Adventure Wii even added a better version of this attack for in the air called the Revolution Beam, which suspends Kirby in the air and fires the beam in a 360 rotation around himself, which is surprisingly one of its stronger moves too. I found this incredibly useful for fighting the mini-bosses, by dealing continuous damage while staying above them and out of harm unless they jump. However, this move was sadly removed from all following games. I guess because they deemed it too good. On the upside, we've almost always had the Beam Blast, which rains down energy blasts onto all enemies diagonally in front of Kirby to clear the way and easily combo into enemies and bosses as this move can be used at least three times and at most seven in the air before landing on the ground depending on the game. 
And the combo game continues in Cycle Beam, which may be one of my favorite dash attacks on its own, thanks to how fast it comes out, the multiple hits, and the forward thrust along with it. Lastly of note when it comes to maintaining range is the Wave Beam. A charge attack that when fully charged deals a lot of damage and passes through enemy and bosses to hit multiple targets at once. Even with having to stay still as you charge, I love being able to keep a distance from bosses with this and sniping them with charge shots for as long as possible. Sometimes you just want to destroy everything in your path without getting close or harmed, and Beam provides a very strong answer to that. <laughs> Beetle. When Triple Deluxe first released, this was the new ability from that game that I liked the look of the most. And fortunately, I ended up enjoying it just as much as I'd hoped. Starting off, this is another ability that makes Kirby fly much faster, with a bonus being that the Beetle Wings do a tiny amount of damage to anything they touch, meaning I could rush through areas while also charging into enemies to get past them to keep the pace going. But that's just a footnote in what I like about Beetle. Its main appeal for me is how it can sweep through enemies in all manner of ways. When it comes to performing combos by racking up hits, first is the standard attack called the Horn Upper, which sounds like a sexual move, that when holding down the B button becomes the Horn Flurry to execute a ton of rapid slashes. When racking up the damage in total, this one move can kill basically any regular enemy in the game. Likewise, it also has the Spiral Horn that's a multi-hit attack sending Kirby and struck enemies into the air, and what's better is that this move pulls in the nearby enemies during the start of the animation, which gives a greater range to deliver devastating results. This move in particular is one I love to use against bosses due to racking up decent damage, namely against the larger ones because of them getting hit all throughout the attack, and the invincibility frames to protect Kirby too. As part of that strategy is how whenever possible I take advantage of its ability to be comboed into the Hardhead Slam for a strong single hit downward attack to rinse and repeat. That's the one other thing about Beetle, it has access to blunt force moves as well to widen its range of usability. Concerned about the range of the previous moves? Well the Rocket Horn has you covered! It's a long distance, large hitbox dashing move that skewers small enemies and can then be comboed into a somersault dive to deal even more damage to them. As part of rushing through levels, when on the ground I would do exactly this over and over to make quick work of enemies without losing too much pace. And one final aspect of Beetle, since they seem to love having these bug related abilities involve throwing shit, it even has a grabbing move where the caught enemy can be carried around and then thrown or slammed into the ground for a ton of extra damage if it's still alive. When it comes to combat, there really isn't much that Beetle can't do, making it possible for the ability to become a complete powerhouse in the right hands, unless there's some competitive Kirby player to tell me I'm wrong. Staff. This ability was one I found to be pure fun to use from the get-go, and coming to understand how its moves work added more to the fun, as well as opening my eyes to how strong of ability I think it is. Staff revolves around ranged attacks using the staff itself that it gives Kirby to wield. It's not as much range as a projectile, but it's certainly long enough for it to be a good choice and have its own edge over the other weapon wielding abilities. It's a bit like Spear, but with that greater reach and some acrobatic moves in exchange for lacking a projectile and not having the fun helicopter move. We get something similar though with the spinning staff where, whenever I can actually do the move input right, the staff takes off on its own to entrap and continuously hit enemies as it rises up. And in some respects, I find it cooler than the helicopter in execution, which is a sentiment that can be repeated across the rest of staff's moveset. I like Spear as well, but the areas that Staff has over it makes it the one I prefer between the two. Not only can Kirby strike towards both sides of him, including at the same time, and above him, but pressing B repeatedly has him perform the Raging Staff move which is a free hit attack that swings all around him and finishes with a downward arc slam in front of him, covering all the previous directions in one move that happens really fast. When it comes to the move I spam all the time, that honor goes to the attack direction down being the pole vault. This is Kirby fling himself forward and it can be used over and over again while Kirby's in the air to turn the staff into a pogo stick. I love using this move as a method of transportation. It's fun, faster than running, and damages all enemies who touch the staff to clear them out of the way. 
And continuing on from this move into another I spam, when facing a boss or a flying enemy that gets in my way as I pogo, I go into its follow-up move, the Unrelenting Staff. Another phallic name, but it's a stand rush style of rapid jabs diagonally downward that is the true epitome of racking up damage. Regular enemies struck in this series of attacks are goners, and it can take off notable chunks of bosses' health bars as you can keep it going by mashing B, which when done enough, even unleashes a stronger final hit to ensure you've killed them. Pulling off all of Staff's moves, and especially this one, is so satisfying. Altogether, this makes the ability become chaotic fun in so many scenarios, and combining it with elements ramps up the chaos even more. Archer. Another triple deluxe ability that stood out to me before release, but this time went beyond my initial impressions to become my favorite new ability from that game. Archer is purely based around projectiles for offense, having only one physical attack that I doubt anybody uses frequently due to how awesome the projectile attacks are. Many of these attacks are simply shooting arrows, which can be aimed in different directions. There are several unique properties across these moves, being to rain arrows down from the sky and a beam blast style series of arrow shots. And while those moves are good in their own right, I already get to have so much fun with this ability from just using the default shot attack. Not only in the general sense is this good as another way of taking out enemies from a distance and avoiding harm in a way where we're merely scratching the bare surface of Archer in that category, but this too is a move that can be charged up by two stages to deal more damage and pass through enemies, of which the second Magic Star Arrow does a ton of. And you can aim while you're charging up to determine the firing angle that is more precise compared to the rest of the aimed shots. I used this move for almost the entirety of my first time fighting the Coily Rattler, of aiming at his head with the Magic Star Arrow while keeping a distance to avoid getting hit and having more time to react when he approached. This became a strategy I love to use against most tougher bosses. It may take way longer than conventional methods, but I have the patience to carry it all out. And assisting in that role is one other key feature of Archer. Holding down causes Kirby to perform the move Camouflage, where despite it appearing to just be him hiding behind a cardboard cutout, this move grants Kirby invincibility the entire time it's in effect. No matter what gets thrown at him, unless the ground somehow collapses below his feet, this piece of cardboard will protect him. You can even fire a ground level arrow while hiding at the cost of losing that invincibility for a split second. So you're not even forced to sit still. This strategy takes even longer than my usual one, but for as slow as it is, it's a lifesaver for the arena, and most of all, the true arena, which is extremely hard, along with its secret super hard extra phase to the final boss that I would likely die hundreds more times to if I didn't do this. The feeling of power you get from Archer's damage, combined with being untouchable when used right, surprisingly makes this form of Kirby a true force to be reckoned with. Fighter. Now it's time to bust out my limited knowledge on competitive fighting game terminology because that's what this ability is based around. Before we got an actual Kirby fighting game, Fighter made the mainline games feel like one with many moves that are clear references to the famous ones seen in that genre to truly make you feel like a fighting game character, as IGN would say. That feeling is most apparent in the boss fights, which is where I find Fighter to shine the most and get the most enjoyment out of it. The main appeal of it being how it's heavily focused on combos, both in the definition I've been using throughout this video of having attacks that deal multiple hits or are easily spammable, and in the traditional fighting game sense of being able to string moves into other moves to perform a series of attacks in one chain, only this time without me having to break my thumbs while going at a light speed pace. An example of both these instances is present right off the bat with the very first attack in the move list being the Vulcan Jab. This move deals one hit for each punch Kirby performs, and by repeatedly pressing the button he will perform this move continuously, which helps to perform some quick chip damage to a boss or tougher enemy. But even then it can also be stringed into the rising break to perform an uppercut that also does multiple hits and sends them in the air from which you can then do the aerial attacks and so on. It's like that for many of the moves in Fighter's Arsenal, and most of them deal quite a bit of damage on their own. So in total, I could see it reaching ridiculous amounts, especially those that can be done in rapid succession. 
such as the Dive Kick, where it's a fast attack with decent damage, but Kirby also rebounds off of any enemy he hits, which it can then be performed again. And against the boss, this is a move I love to spam once the opportunity arises, like when they're stunned. Because then I can deal a bunch of chip damage to them before they move out of the way, and I have to revert back to a more in-your-face approach, which is not at all a bad thing given Fighter's range of other moves. It even has a projectile by doing a Hadouken. I hardly ever use this move or its charge variants, to be honest, but the fact that it's there as an option is still very good for the player and just expands its usability. That's probably the best way to sum up Fighter. It has some very strong and effective moves that are easy to use and chain together while feeling super skilled in the process. It has a range of uses to make even quicker work of enemies than most other abilities, and it's a powerful asset for boss fights. I'm aware that for a lot of people, this is their favorite copy ability. And while I love it too, there is just one other that manages to exceed it. Ninja. I've already said that this is my favorite copy ability, but that was in a couple of videos that nobody gives a shit about, so only around three people would have known this was coming. Conceptually, you might have been able to predict it since I tend to love ninjas, and that concept alone probably would have subconsciously played a role in putting it higher up on the list in any other scenario, but that part is really just the icing on the cake of what makes me love this ability. The true reason why Ninja is my favorite is because it possesses many of the things found in all the previous copy abilities all rolled into one to create an amalgamation of lovable qualities. For one, it already has a blend of both close range and longer distance attacks. Pressing and holding the attack button will have Kirby swing a katana in front of him, which for some reason the official name of this move is Shock. And if this move is performed near and hits an enemy, it will immediately follow up with a second slash that also creates a shock wave, where the name now makes a bit more sense, and strikes multiple enemies at once with a fairly high vertical range too. Alternatively, by simply tapping the attack button and doing so repeatedly, we'll have Kirby throw a kunai for each tap. And by keeping this up, you have a constant stream of damage traveling across the screen with infinite range to strike enemies and rack up damage against bosses while once again keeping a distance to ideally avoid harm. Additionally, an improvement to Kirby's natural abilities this provides is that he can cling to walls, in which the knife throw can also be used while clinging. So if you find a boss that is more acrobatic or flies, as long as there are walls in its room, you can do that exact same strategy here. Even for grounded bosses, you can simply use the wall cling as a way to avoid most of their attacks. Those two are already moves I love to make many uses out of when the opportunity arises. But even they don't match up to the number of times I rely on and spam the use out of the dash attack, Stealth Slash. Attacking while running makes Kirby zip forward with a quick draw slash that pretty much kills all enemies in its path, and it grants him invincibility, albeit for only the beginning part of the attack. The one issue I have with this move is that I can have a tendency to end up slamming headfirst into enemies and getting hit once the invincibility period is over. But when you manage to get the right distance when you start, and doing so is easier than how I make it sound, it becomes such an effective move. And despite its slight ending lag, it can be spammed over and over to speed along the ground, ideally without trouble, and be done to pass back and forth through bosses as another way of racking up damage. And in Star Allies specifically, combining Ninja with elements makes Stealth Slash even more effective by increasing its damage and area of effect. Namely the Bluster version that has Kirby dash diagonally up with a trail of whirlwinds, and the Zap version that leaves behind lightning strikes or even better vertical reach than the Shock Wave. All of Ninja's moves that are affected by elemental attributes are given cool new properties to make them more versatile, but I find Stealth Strike to be the one that benefits the most. And if that still wasn't enough, it has a dive kick too! Granted, the angle it travels and the way it rebounds off of enemies doesn't make it as spammable as fighters, but it's still something I can use in the appropriate circumstances while also having access to all the other moves Ninja provides that I like using. And the last of Ninja's moves that I want to touch on is Clone Technique. If you press the guard button just when you're about to get hit, Kirby pulls a little sneaky and hits the enemy instead from a puff of smoke. I'm terrible at using this move, as you can clearly see, but for those who can time it right consistently, it becomes incredibly useful if you're pushed back into a more defensive approach. So let's recap. 
Ninja has projectiles, strong physical attacks, combos in both hitting multiple times and the ability to spam moves that all have good range to boot, multiple ways to stay away from enemies and avoid harm while dealing damage, the ability to speed through levels, can attack multiple enemies at once in some of its moves, a few moves with invincibility frames, kind of, improves your defensive capabilities, and is amazing against bosses on essentially all fronts. It's like a jack of all trades that includes everything I love in a copy ability in one place. While some of the things it can do can be done better in other abilities, having access to all those things at once is a trade off I find to be worth it in the end. And almost all the ways in which it doesn't do as well are not issues I would lose sleep over. So if I had to go into the unknown in a Kirby game without any knowledge of what's to come and having every copy ability I know of laid out in front of me with that choice of only picking one, I would choose Ninja every single time.